day. This is what Israel deals with every day. I don't think Americans totally understand. In fact, we were there, and there was ambulances going out and sirens going out. In fact, several people were killed. The, the rabbis were murdered while we were there. Yes. And, and in the streets, you see it. And I know, you know, Israel is not happy about the news of this just because it keeps tourists sometimes from coming. But nothing happened to us, and we were no, we were very safe, content. Yeah. Oh, very. Well, yeah, I mean, the safest place to be is in the will of God. Amen. No matter where Amen. you are, that, you know, it right. says, "Though a thousand fall on my right, this, yes. this, how, you know, the terror. I will not be afraid of that terror yes. uh, by night. I will not that's be afraid right. of that sp yeah. specific word, that's terror. Right. That's right. To be in the will of God. And when you're in Israel, I mean, I feel. No. We said this. I feel safer than being in New Jersey. Sure, you know, yeah. truly, absolutely, truly. Yeah. The other side of it is it's satanic, and yes. the other side is that right. the enemy is in these things, just as he was with the ancient Assyrians. Mm -hmm. the, the enemy is in them, and he, the enemy is a terrorist. That's the enemy right. is a bluffer. <laughs> the enemy. I mean, yeah. we read we the read the last it. time about when the Assyrians were on the walls, like by the walls of Jerusalem, and they're shouting, you know. We, you know, we're going to destroy you. you. Nobody can stand. And they're shouting in Hebrew. You know, they're saying, stop yeah. doing it in Hebrew. Yeah. We don't want the people to say, so no, we're going to shout in Hebrew. The enemy is a terrorist. He bluffs. Wow. He bluffs. He, he uses power he doesn't have. I right. mean, he, 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 he makes it as if he has more. He's a bluffing lion. And so mm. that, that is the, the ultimate thing. So terrorism is all sin. So he, it's satanic. The, sa the enemy's in these people. Yes. You know, the Lord can allow, can remove the hedge at times, depending on what's happening. But the enemy is in that as well, clearly. And the enemy hates Israel, so he, the enemy puts terror against Israel. Yes. You know, at the same time, Israel, the Jewish people, need their shepherd back. You yes. know, they need their Messiah back. Yes. Otherwise, they're vulnerable to the terror of the enemy. It says, you know, you'll go from one nation to the next, and it'll, it'll be a horror. You know, and that's also what Israel has. Jesus said, I am your shepherd. You know, yes. what happens when a sheep lose their shepherd? They become scattered and a prey to every beast of the field. That's what's happened for the Jewish people. The enemy is going crazy against them. But, but the other side of it is that the enemy is going crazy against them. It's because he knows God is coming through that nation. The kingdom is coming. Mm -hmm. That's why. But so you have this whole, all this together in, in this picture. It's everything. I really didn't want to get this deep this fast because we <laughs> never get to even say hi hello anymore. So much is happening. But... Um, we haven't talked about your family, the, the boys, the uh, house things. Uh, house Eliel and Dial and they Renata. Are, they are cute as, as, in, as, as always, <laughs> and cute as ever. Um, amazing what comes out of the mouth. And, and Eliel's so much learning the Bible, so oh. sharp with it. And he's um, five years old now, is that he's right? He's turning six next, next oh, month. Oh, he's so almost. He will tell you that. Oh, my God. Um, look at him and his little <laughs> him drum, drum set. And, oh, uh, but we did, But we did, have a, uh, we did have a little crisis. He came home from kindergarten with a paper, and we looked at it. And what, what he had, that paper, was his first his first love note. Oh. He had a love note. Someone oh. at a, turns out in his kindergarten class is this little woman oh. who has <laughs> intentions, <laughs> intentions on our son. Oh. She, she could barely write her name. She just learned how to write her name, oh. but she wrote her name on it. My wrote goodness. two stick figures, <laughs> one with a lot of curly hair, Elia, uh, and her, uh, oh. and she wrote a heart. Oh, you know. my. And she's a blonde. Oh, boy. And so, so we, uh, <laughs> I had a long talk with him. I said, you know, oh, man. you know, if you're into, you know, if you got to bring, if that's you know, this going on, you have to bring her to the parents. <laughs> that's right. He said, he said, Dad, I'm gonna marry her. Said, this is, this is oh it. boy! So that was our crisis. <laughs> that is so cute. You have oh, to save that man. little piece of paper oh, forever. Man. We had such an amazing time with the kids in Israel. We yeah, did. Yeah, you sent me, you sent me that picture. Those pictures are so incredible. Which is which is Eliel and you building sandcastles on the shores of, of Tel Aviv. It was a, a treasure. A it treasure, really was. Treasure. Oh, yeah. a Those were great moments. Yes. We told the story yeah. before, but, you know, w remember, Sasha, what happened when Jim and Eliel were building the sandcastle, and yes. Rabbi was pitching in and then helping <laughs> a little bit, and it was just Jim's teaching him, and he's building it, and then Dial, his little brother, Rabbi Jungus comes up, and what happens, Rabbi? He, he kicks in them. He <laughs> kicks yes. that sandcastle over. Yes. yes. But yes. it was amazing. Everybody has their gift. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. And it was amazing. It really was he an amazing be moment. Be a warrior, because, huh? yeah. 
pastor was teaching Eliel at that moment that no matter what in life, that even when you were a kid, you would build up these sandcastles or you would build things and other little kids would come over and knock them down. <laughs> yeah. And even in th- even throughout life that you would build things yes. and other kids and other people would come and knock it down. <coughs> and Eliel looked at you, he processed it for a few moments, went and played in the sea for a little bit, but came back and really thought about it. And he looked at you, pastor, and he said, why did they do that to you? That's why right. did, and why he did was they, really, he, he really was, understood. He was overhearing what we were talking about. We weren't even saying, and, and yeah. he yeah. said that. Why did they do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, yeah. It was a really profound yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. But you keep building. The, the, the lesson there was you keep building. You keep building. You keep you building. Keep going. Yeah. And God honors it. And he does. And he does. And he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, out of, out of left field, uh, you know, somebody yesterday, out of blue, I, I had uh, somebody launched an attack against Prayer Mountain. I mean, right in the middle of building. And I thought, of all the things in the world n- no one should come against would be Prayer Mountain. But, you know, it's like, all right, Lord, can I not do anything that somebody doesn't want to mm-hmm. stop? But it's just like we were talking with your, your children as we were building uh, this these castles on the, there and uh it you know we sit here today starting we've started again it was all destroyed my whole life basically everything that i've done and god says you know and jubilee as i studied jubilee it's the restoring it, you know and he says mm-hmm. you know in the he said like in the last days he's gonna put his spirit but before that he says i'm gonna restore but the canker room and all these things. And so we're in the greatest restoration time. Yes. But, uh, and, and the, all of you can claim this. It depends what side you're on. You know, if you're on God's side, it's a restoration time. Yes. And I believe God wants to get his church ready for, yeah, it's war. It's going to be warfare. But we're going to win more souls. Mm-hmm. And And, you know, you have to have, well, if you don't have a, a war, I, I, I don't know what you, you can't win the war if you don't That's right. have a war. That's right. So we all want to win wars, but we don't want to have a war, right? None of us want war. But the wars come. Mm-hmm. And, and the world, and, and Christians especially, they're murdering Christians overseas. This, this group of people that you've been talking about that, that started with the Harbinger book, you warned us. And the same people that destroyed... Uh, 9-11, started the Twin Towers, they're the same people that uh, did the attack in Paris. Is that right? And they're all joined together. They're all joined together. ISIS is an outgrowth of Al-Qaeda, you mm-hmm. know, and Al-Qaeda, and all of them, and especially ISIS, go, but both of them go back to the very same people from which Isaiah 9-10 comes, the very same people in those chapters uh, are the inventors of terrorism. These are their spiritual children. And in the case of ISIS, probably their flesh and blood children, the actual people. So it's all part of the same thing. Wow. And talk about that. Talk about, you know, we're talking about people liking to destroy. What do terrorists do? They destroy. destroy. Yeah. What's the enemy called? The mm. destroyer. destroyer. The mm-hmm. destroyer. Mm-hmm. God creates, the enemy destroys. destroys. Mm-hmm. So that's the spirit of the enemy. You know, wherever it occurs, that's the spirit of the enemy. Right. It's sad when church people become the accuser of the brethren yeah and the yeah. destroyer yeah and so people need to examine and see what side are you on you just might be fighting on the wrong side yeah how can I mean, who is best in place who's the most m- the most uh perfectly positioned to accuse people in the church people in the church yeah. so the enemy will use that of course yeah. if he can yeah. if he you know if he can do that the attacks from the inside are harder than the ones on the outside mm-hmm. so oh. he will try <laughs> always to use if he can turn someone to be able to accuse the brethren, who's behind the accuser of the brethren? It's him. I mean, listen, even Peter was used by the end, you know, yeah. was influenced. So it can happen. But that's why we have to be especially vigilant, not to be, not, not to let a word. It says, give no room for the devil. It says, give no place. No, yes. Let no bitter root develop. Nothing. The enemy will yeah. always use that. So don't let him have a, an, an inch is what it's saying. Right. Uh, the people at, I call it WIND, W-N-D. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. World Net Daily. How do you pronounce it? Is there a name? WND is right. WND. Did you just say WND? WND? That's it. World Net Daily. I don't know. Yeah. I always call them WIND. Yeah. It's not really. It's WND. And uh, 
they are one of the top producers of documentaries and things that that, that I've, I've seen. They've actually won awards for some of their great productions. And I think they've done other productions for you, some of the award-winning stuff. Well, they, they, yeah, it's their productions, but they've done, yeah, Isaiah 910, mm -hmm. uh, the, the first, the first mm -hmm. DVD of The Harbinger, mm -hmm. What's in the Harbinger, that was, they said it was for two years, it was the number one faith video in the world. So right. they do very good, very good things. Mm -hmm. Yes, they've done a lot. Somebody, this is not like you, Rabbi, to allow somebody, this is mm -hmm. called The Harbinger Man, it says, is this the final warning? That's on the, on the movie. And it says, the Jonathan Kahn story, and, and I know how you don't want to bring any attention to yourself. You have mm -hmm. to preach, so we have mm -hmm. to be out there. And uh, mm -hmm. so how did you come about well, to, yeah. to do, let them do this yeah, well, story, well, well, uh, kind of a documentary yeah. of your life? Yeah, I'll, well, I would never do this from our thing. I, I know would never you would never it do it. So. But, but I was asked by Joseph Farah of World of Day, I said, we want to do this. I said, you know, this is something that I'll never do. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do it, then the main thing is make sure it make sure it's it's the overall thing. It's lifting up the Lord. It is lifting up salvation. Right. It's getting the messages in there. It's showing His hand, um, and it's a message for a believer and for the unsaved as well. I said that's what you have. If you have, we'll do that, and they said yes. Well, that's that. That's that's what it's going to be, and that's what it is. And that is mm -hmm. what yeah. it is. I've yeah. watched yeah. it in detail. Yeah, I, I mean, it's I, excellent. Yeah, yeah. I feel you know. I mean, this is me. I'm, I get embarrassed with something about me. It's one thing to sh share a message, but. On the other hand, it's like a testimony, but it, the whole point is the Lord. I mean, yes. the whole that's the whole point of everything. Yes. The, the point is the Lord. And so they made it, for, believer, unbeliever, it is what God has done, and it's, and it's the, message of, of, the message of God, really. That's your life about. really is. That, that's, that's your life point. really we, is amazing. I'd like to play a little clip. Yeah, yes. there's some clips. Mondo the, has one in the Yeah, this, is, this, I believe, is going to be the opening, which is the opening is you're actually hearing the, because it's about getting the message out. You're hearing the message shared on Capitol Hill that was the Smiles of Heaven mess warning, which is from Washington's warning to America. Yes. And I'm sharing it on Capitol Hill at the beginning, and they took that, and you, the vo what you'll hear is the voice is literally from cap recorded from inside the Capitol. So that's what that, this is the opening of it. Okay, let's roll that one. Day one, George Washington lays his hand on the Bible in the capital city, and America as we know it comes into existence. He then enters the halls of Congress, delivers his first ever presidential address, and in those first words ever spoken by an American president lies a prophetic warning to this nation. Only two civilizations in human history came into existence dedicated from conception to the will and purposes of God. The first was called Israel. The second is called America. America was to be a city on a hill, a light to the world, from the words of the Jewish rabbi from Nazareth. And God blessed this nation as no nation has ever been blessed, to unparalleled heights of prosperity and power. But on America's first day came a prophetic warning. It was this. The propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself hath ordained. In other words, if America ever turns away from God, if it ever disregards the word and ways of God, then the smiles of heaven, the blessings of God, will be removed from this land. Can a nation drive out the name of God from its public squares and the word of God from its schools and the ways of God from its culture and still expect the smiles of God to shine upon it? Can the blood of 50 million unborn children cry out to heaven from this land and the smiles of heaven still remain? Members of Congress, can a government call good evil and evil good and forge laws that war against the laws of the Almighty and the smiles of heaven still remain? 
Supreme Court justices, can you strike down the statutes of the Almighty and overturn the judgments of the Most High and still expect the smiles of heaven to remain? And Mr. President, can you place your left hand on the word of God to assume your office and then with your right hand sign laws that break the very word upon which you swore and still expect the smiles of heaven to remain? The voice of our first president cries out to us tonight and answers, no, you cannot do so and still expect the smiles of heaven to remain upon this land. When judgment came to ancient Israel, the destruction returned to the very same place, the place where the nation had been dedicated to God in prayer. The calamity returned to the nation's ground of dedication. On America's first day, after the prophetic warning was given, our first government walked on foot to the appointed ground on which to pray and dedicate this nation to God. That place is America's ground of consecration. Where was it? America was dedicated to God and her sacred ground of consecration is ground zero. On that day, a shockwave went forth from that sacred ground and struck Federal Hall, the place where Washington gave the warning of what would happen if this nation ever turned away from God. And the power of that force cracked open that foundation and the smiles of heaven were removed from the land. voice of God cries out, return America, and I will have mercy on you. And tonight we bear witness from Capitol Hill that the warning of our first president is true and that our hope is not in the White House or the Supreme Court or the Capitol or Wall Street. Our hope is in the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our hope is in Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the same yesterday, today, and forever. To him alone the nation is dedicated and him alone is his salvation. So let the word go forth this night to this nation. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Let the will of God be done, let the name of God be lifted up, and let this city on the hill again shine with the light of the fire of the glory of the living God in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the light of the world, the glory of Israel, and the hope of these United States. So help us God. Amen. You know, Rabbi, since I met you uh, three year, four years ago now, that uh, you have gone to the uh, Washington, D.C., you've been in buildings that very few people get to speak in, That's Federal right. Hall, yeah. uh, Crazy. in D.C., the, the great Senate and, and Congress there. You, you have uh, U.N., the United Nations in New York, and God lifted you up, and this this story is about your family and your beginnings yeah which they didn't get started yet i hope we can yes, run a we'll couple pieces yeah, this week yeah. so you can see more of it but if you want to get the whole uh, movie of this man that god has raised up to be a, a voice for this hour we're we're, we're, th we're throwing that in with an amazing package yes. of materials we've got the books the rabbi's two best-selling books and if you already have them, just get the whole package. It's $125, and it's like, it's like a package of it's worth incredible. $620 retail value. That's right. And it's going to come with all of uh, Rabbi's brand new volume 15 mysteries. That's eight different lessons. Mm -hmm. It's going to come with that Harbinger Man documentary. It's a 95-minute documentary. And it is with a special bonus. This. Yes. Is, yes, volume one and volume two of the tour of Israel. Now, that's, this honestly should be at least $200 or more. And this set is uh, included with it. And it's volume one and volume two, which is complete our tour video you take a to complete video cruise and That's all right. to shoot all of this yes and, and then of course edit it down for, for for viewing and this is a beautiful full color tour of the holy and then the teachings from the rabbi yes. and all of the special holy places rabbi was 
giving in-depth teachings Girl. from Masada to, you know, the, the Jordan River to Cana. I mean, just everywhere in Galilee, teachings everywhere from Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. And yes. then you get the Israel Mysteries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Another whole set of DVDs and a couple CDs in mm -hmm. this uh, set of mysteries. You get that as another major bonus. That's right. And you're also going to receive the Talit as well. Right. In this. Yes. yes. I have one right here. It's one of my favorite things. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> and I, I guess the maybe case I'll too. be Jewish someday. <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother are. was. But <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but you have to have your grandfather. They tell me. But I don't know. <laughs> then so but you get this also as a wonderful gift. Yes, That's right. And? and you also are going to receive the Secrets and Keys for Success and Your Calling DVD by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. I love this. Yes. And this is all included. I mean, like we've been talking about this whole, you know, yesterday and the day before and the next few days, we've been talking about the, the Mysteries, Volume 15, those eight DVD and CD teachings. Yes. That's all included in this as well. And it's wow. all for a donation of only $125 yeah, to the ministry. We're calling it the Rabbi's Christmas Bundle, <laughs> but I, I call it We Love the Rabbi. <laughs> that's like right. That. That's awesome. And yes. so that's why we, we put the, the yes. new documentary movie about his story, his life story, yes. to share the harbinger what, man. what God has yes. done mm -hmm. and even the, the secrets of his success mm -hmm. and what God, how God let a, a young rocking boy, mm -hmm. rocker, <laughs> turn into a rabbi yes. that the world is listening to. Amen. So, uh, so just, good. You just I love it. Do it and uh, bless the ministry with your gift. But we want to bless you mm -hmm. with an abundant yes. gift back. Oh, mm. man. Now, it's, Christmas is coming up. <laughs> and uh, the mystery volume 15, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what we're sending out, mm -hmm. uh, there's co one called the Bethlehem Mysteries. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Can you tell us yeah, about that? Sure, yeah. Uh, First of all, growing up and hearing about Bethlehem, for Jewish people hearing about Bethlehem, it doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem like there was anything Jewish about it. I mean, Bethlehem, you, you know, uh, you know, we're thinking of, of Frosty the Snowman when we think of Christmas oh. and all these things. And, mm -hmm. and yet it is, there's a whole, there's a, such a deep, wonderful, um, rich revelation from Bethlehem, why God chose Bethlehem of all places. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to put that in there because it, in, in, the, in, the, in the album, because of that, and actually, by the way, if you look at the, the Harbinger Scripture, what chapter is that? Isaiah 9. Mm -hmm. Well, go a few verses earlier, and it's unto us a child is born. You know, there's always hope. You know, there's yes. always hope. And, and, and the, thing about, the thing about the blessing of what we're talking about, about of God coming, he doesn't take away the problems. That's not what Christmas is about. That's not what the birth of... He puts God into the problem. He puts mm. God into the situation. So he doesn't take away our problems, but he puts God into it, and that's bigger than our problems, and that's yeah. what solves the problem. That's but it. So you know, we want, you know, the salvation is just take, take me away from the, no, put God's presence in it. He, that's what overcomes our whole life. He wants us to have things to deal with yes. so we can show <laughs> that, you know. But so yeah, Bethlehem, why Bethlehem? First thing, Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the place where David, David, the kingdom of David begins. He's, he is a shepherd. In Bethlehem, that's his hometown, Bethlehem. The prophecies of Messiah, he's not just the gentle Jesus that we know, which he is, but it says he was born, he will reign on the throne of his father, David. He is the Ben David, the son of David, the one who will rule over Israel on David's throne and rule over the nations. This is why the king, the son of David, must be born in the place of David, because he is that. He is, he is the the, the, you know, even when he was, uh, the angel spoke to Mary or Miriam, said he will sit on the throne of his father, David. You know, and so the first thing is he's born in the royal place of David, which is telling us that he, the one who's being born is the king, the king who's being born. Now, another thing about it is think about who greeted him in Bethlehem, who greeted him. I mean, we were about a year ago, probably, it may have been a year ago this day, mm -hmm. we were actually... Yeah in Jerusalem, and I don't, I don't think everybody got to be, but right. we were in Bethlehem. Right. And we went, actually we overlooked it, we went down a kind of kind of hillside mm -hmm. there, and, mm -hmm. uh, and we're singing and worshiping and overlooking it, and a uh, uh, wonderful thing. And, and the thing is, you could picture the shepherds being there, because it's shepherd land, you know. Who were the ones who greeted him? Wasn't stockbrokers or kings, or <laughs> wasn't, wasn't insurance agents. 
shepherds. Why? Because the Bible says Messiah will be the shepherd of shepherds. He will be the great shepherd. He will shepherd Israel. He will be the shepherd of our souls. So, so where is he going to be born? Well, Bethlehem is the place of shepherds. So he's the place where he's greeted by the shepherds. You know, and you see this, and we just mentioned this in the other program, that what happens, you know, Jesus said, I'm the shepherd. Well, most of the Jewish people turned away. What happened to the Jewish people? They became, for 2,000 years, like a, like a flock scattered without a shepherd. What happens when there's no shepherd? Scattered. What happens? The, the, the predators start attacking it. 2,000 years. Well, that shows you who the shepherd is. It's Jesus. He's the shepherd. So, so that's the other thing about it, that he's born in the place of the shepherds. But also, it's not just, you know, we know Bethlehem, but Bethlehem is a Hebrew word. Even though most Jewish people don't know it, many Christians don't realize what it means. Bethlehem is two Jewish words, two Hebrew words. Beit, that's Beth, and Lechem, and Beit means house or place, and Lechem means bread. Bethlehem is the house of bread. So what more perfect place for him to be born who is, says, I am the bread of life, to be born in the house of bread. So good. It says, I am the bread from heaven that comes down to the earth. Well, it comes down to the earth where? In the house of bread. How perfect. Yes. How perfect. And what, you know, where, where specifically? In the manger, and we think of the manger as being the stable. Manger is not a stable. Manger, you get from that that word, you get words manja. It means the eating trough. The eating tray is what it means for the bread of life. You know, that's all. He's the bread of life. And what mm -hmm. it's telling us wow. that he was born in Beit Lechem. That what that tells us is whatever's the bread. You know, bread is what you need most. Bread is basic. You need it most. It's the bread of your life. It's the you know, whatever you need most. That's what's com coming to Bethlehem. That's what's coming to the house of bread. So if we needed money, well, then when they came to the manger, they'd find money there. They'd find success there. They'd find something else. They'd find doctrines there. They didn't. They found him who is the bread of life because we need him most. We need him more because he is the bread of life. Whatever is born in the house of bread, that's the bread of our lives. Amen. That's the next thing about Bethlehem. Another thing about it as well is that we know, you know, Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Yes. Who is Messiah? Yes. The lamb of God. Well, what was the place? Where were the lambs raised? Bethlehem. It's the place of the lambs. In fact, not just the lambs. I mean, if you, if you go there to this yeah. day, you'll find shepherds there. Yes. Because it's perfect it's for the lambs to be raised. But not just that. There's a little mystery. The rabbis wrote down in the Mishnah, the one of the rabbinical books, they said all the, lamb, the, the, the sheep and grazing in Israel was always done in the wilderness outside the regular land of Israel. The one exception is if the lamb or the sheep were being raised to be the temple sacrifice. So what does that mean? Bethlehem is inside Israel, not in the wilderness. So if they were raising lambs, it means they were the ones raising the temple sacrifice lambs. So Bethlehem is the place not just for the lambs, but for the lambs that are born for the sacrifice. <laughs> wow. Uh, so what, what, think about that. So Messiah is born in the place where lambs are born yes. outside. What do the shepherds do? The shepherds are the ones, the first ones to greet the birth of a lamb. That's what they do. They're the ones to greet. That's why they're the first ones. They're yeah. greeting the lamb, but not just that. The shepherds of Bethlehem are the ones who greet the birth. They're there at the birth of the lamb born for the sacrifice. Wow. It's a sacrificial wow. temple lamb that i mean uh, you know um, how wow. perfect god is how yes. perfect god is yes. that he was literally raised for that mm -hmm. but now here i'll give you i'll just throw in wow, one that's or two oh, more that's so and good that's that powerful is, god is a we need to talk about that on christmas day that should start making that part of our traditions and teaching our children and our grandchildren this one yeah. mystery right here yeah. you know, he it's was born perfect. to yeah. die he was born that's to it. be that sacrifice this That's perfect it. plan of God is so minute yes. and such detail yeah. that if anyone studies it, you have to be a believer. You, yes. you will be a believer yeah. if you read and study yeah. it. Yeah, and, and amazing, when you say that, amazing because the Bible, I mean, if this was a book of man, mm -hmm. the Bible would say, hey, look, don't you, do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see this? Look, Bethlehem. It doesn't say that. It's just there. Well, something else about Bethlehem, that it has to do with something else, the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth yeah. takes place in Bethlehem. Bethlehem, it's about, the book of Ruth is about the law of the Goel. Mm -hmm. What is the Goel? The Goel is the Redeemer, but just not just the Redeemer. The Redeemer specifically, 
That comes at a specific instance. When a woman, her husband dies, she has no children. The, the law of the Goel says the, the brother of the husband or a near relative can redeem the woman's life, redeem the family, redeem the line by marrying the woman and raising up children to the line. He is called the Goel or the kinsman redeemer, as you read in many translations. Goel is the redeemer, not just a, rede a redeemer who actually marries you, a redeemer who actually, actually becomes one with you and makes you fruitful that you bear. That's who the Goel is. So the thing is that, so you see this, where does this take place? This is the book of Ruth. Where does it happen? It happens in Bethlehem. So what's the mystery here? Well, the inter when you look at the Bible, you see this mystery of the Goel happening on one, with one particular line, and that's the line of Judah. Happens with Judah and Tamar. If you remember that story? Yes. That's the Goel. Mm -hmm. it's, re it's like an intervention. We've got to come into an intervening into the line. Then it happens, the same line comes, comes Boaz, is born from that, and then with Boaz and Ruth, another redeemer. He comes into the line with, with Naomi's line through Ruth and raises up children for that house. He's the, he's the Goel. So you've got another intervention. But what's the big the mystery is this. The mm -hmm. ultimate Goel is God. Yes. God is the kinsman redeemer. Yes. Not just the redeemer. He's the, he's the God who marries us, yes. marries the widow, marries the life that can't produce fruit, marries and becomes one with, makes fruitful and raises up life where there couldn't have been life before. So where does that take place? It takes place in Bethlehem. That's where the Goel intervenes into the line of humanity. He comes, it's a barren line. This world is barren, can't produce the fruit. That, you know, our lives are barren without God. We're made to produce fruit for God. We can't do it. Israel was barren, could not do it. All barren. So he is the kinsman redeemer. He intervenes. It's, the mystery is God himself is coming into the line. He comes into the line in Bethlehem, the line of man, the line of the creation. He makes a barren creation, marries it, and it bears fruit. He comes into Israel, barren Israel, makes Israel bear the fruit, comes into Miriam, Mary, and through her it all bears fruit. He redeems our lives. He redeems the life of the son. He becomes the ultimate goel. Where does that take place? It takes place in Bethlehem. That's the place of the goel. That's why he does it. And when you read, so it's what a perfect place. That way, when you read in in uh, the scriptures where it says God is your redeemer, many times in the Hebrew it doesn't say it quite like that. It says, the Lord says, I am your goel, literally. I am the one who marries you, who raises up children for you, who makes your life fruitful. I am the goel. It says, your Lord is your goel. It says, or blessed be the Lord who redeems your life from the pit. No, it says in Hebrew, who goels your life from the pit. You mm. know, so how perfect of God, how yes. perfect. That's an, another mystery of oh. Bethlehem. And I'll just share one last Beautiful. thing, very, very simple, is that it says in, in the prophecy of, of Messiah's birth in Micah, it says, but as for you, Bethlehem, though you be the smallest of the clans of Judah, from you will he go forth, who will be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from ancient times, from the days of eternity. Uh, be incredible, Micah 5, 2. Incredible. Mm. But what does it say there? You, Bethlehem, because you're the, you're the least. You're the least likely of every pla any place on earth. You're so small, people don't even look at you, and yet I'm going to come into you. I'm going to come through you, and I'm going to give glory through you. It's going to happen. And what that says is that God's will is always. He didn't do it in Jerusalem. He didn't do it where you'd think. He did it in this little town of Bethlehem, this nothing place. He does it because God chooses the least likely of the world. Yes. He chooses all of us who are least likely yes. to, to, pr to do it, produce anything. Right. And he loves doing that. <laughs> and he says, I, I love the least likely. I'm going to take the least likely so people will know it's me when they see the change in your life. Yeah. They'll know it's me who does it. The littlest, the least. God wants, the, the ultimate mystery of Bethlehem, God wants us to be his Bethlehem, yes. that he comes through us, we become his Bethlehem. That's so Amen. good. Amen. Don't I you love, love that? This is, th this is a great Christmas. <laughs> I love this for a Christmas story. Yeah. Uh, you know, we hear the same story, but there's a lot more. They call it meeting it out. When you're going to do something, you're going to meet out. You know what I mean? Meet it mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, why? Of course, I guess I should know all this. But it's such a battle for Bethlehem. And it's still very small. Yes. It hasn't grown a lot. Yeah. 
It's been, well, it was taken over by the Palestinian Authority, number one, mm. and in many ways have driven many of the Christian Arabs out. Mm -hmm. that's, that's number two. Um, and, you know, on one hand, it kind of tells you something. I mean, it's, it hasn't been Jewish for a long time. I mean, for, you know, but that tells you something. The Messiah has to be born in Bethlehem. So it says, if you, but you keep a Jewish Messiah is not going to be born in Bethlehem today, you know. And so it's telling you, whoever the Messiah is, he had to have already come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, it's kind of yeah. like sealing the door. Mm -hmm. You know, he had oh. already come. Well, the other thing is that there's a, there's a spiritual thing. You know, look, when you look at Revelation, and you read, and it says, talks about the dragon and the woman. Mm -hmm. And the dragon, it says, the woman gave birth to the man-child, who's Messiah. Mm -hmm. And it says, then the dragon came after that woman to destroy that woman. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. he, the, the woman is Israel. Who, with the stars and the moon, mm -hmm. who gave birth to Messiah. Yes. In the end, he's coming back to her. He's coming against her. He's been coming against the, that woman. That dragon's been coming against the Jewish people for 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. And because he knows what's coming, he says he knows his time is short. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going to come. That's one, but he also comes after the woman because she gave birth. Because she mm -hmm. gave birth. So he hates the Jewish people all the more mm. because they, they brought Messiah into the world. So he went crazy after them. And so even though Bethlehem is the place where, he, where Messiah was, bought, wh was brought forth. So mm -hmm. it makes sense that the enemy would go against, would hate Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Because that's where, that's like the, the womb that bore that's salvation right. to the world. Yes. Which is crushing him. Wow. The, the, the seed of the woman will crush the your head. Mm -hmm. You'll strike his feet. Mm -hmm. This is where the woman bore the seed, bore the seed of, of salvation. God. So of course he hates Bethlehem. Yes. I, wow. I was in Bethlehem. There it, is warfare. There is, there is over it, the Holy Land. Uh -huh. it, it's a, it's an eternal warfare, and if you ever go there, you'll know, you'll feel it, you'll mm -hmm. sense it. The Jews really own Jerusalem. I mean, they they legitimately somebody attacked the Jewish people, and they defended themselves, and they ended up, yes. you know, it's all's fair in love and war. Mm -hmm. Well. Israel ended up with Jerusalem. Yes. In at, this war. <laughs> at the prophetic, in the year of the prophetic jubilee. Yeah. That's when they were restored through fighting. What, what people on earth, when they build a house in their own capital city, the world condemns them for that. I mean, build a house in Jerusalem condemns for building a house. Well, the enemy is so, so much against them coming back to Israel, to Jerusalem. Why? Because when they come back, that's what Messiah said. You're gonna, that's when you're going to say, blessed is he, that's when I'm coming. So he will do everything he can to keep the Jewish people out of Israel and out of Jerusalem and out of the Temple Mount because that's the, that's the center of it all. That's what has to be. So notice what, no, what's on that mount. It, what's on that mount is this dome, this dome of Allah. You know, it's like the, it's like the enemy saying, right here, you can't come in. I put my claim in here. I'm going to stop you. Go to the other side. Go to the, we were there. Go to the, go to the eastern gate. Oh. It says Messiah is going to, the Lord's going to come through that gate. You know, and so what do they do? They blocked up the gate. They have, they have a cannon on the other side. Like that's going to stop the Messiah, right. you know, you know, right. and they literally block it up. I mean, that's like the enemy. I'll block up whatever God has for you. I'm going to try to block it up. I'm going to mm -hmm. try to block it up. Yet by doing that, by blocking it up, it says in the scripture in Ezekiel, that, that se the gate shall be sealed for the Lord came in. So they're actually trying to stop God's prophecy. They're actually fulfilling God's prophecy. <laughs> yes. The enemy can't, can't win in the end. You no, know, he he ends up doing it. So it's, it's trying to stop. Amen. If you don't believe the Bible, this is an eternal warfare yeah. that is trying to keep King Jesus from coming back. You know, Putin has mentioned this week that ISIS is being financed from 40 different nations you see it's not about money but the love of money is the root of all evil mm -hmm. and uh, we're seeing mm -hmm. the money systems and we'll on our next program maybe we can talk a little bit more about that because you talk about how Samita is about mm -hmm. finance a mm -hmm. lot of times mm -hmm. it's just judgment period mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the money mm -hmm. is what makes the world go round it's the first yeah the first part of this video is that the foundation is there that America's dollar is on the verge of collapsing because our enemies have planned to bring it down.
Zach, you're studying this every sure. day. I mean, if we study the dollar bill, we know that the dollar bill is the linchpin for the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. And I believe that there are countries that, yes, want to take it down, but there's other countries that want their currency to be number one, not just because they want to take the dollar bill down, but because they see the future of where the dollar bill is going. So essentially, they're trying to protect themselves because they know if the dollar goes, they go as well. And, and one, of the, one of the big historic changes that happened with the Shemitah, and we remember that one of the things is the rise and fall of nations, is in the year of the Shemitah, the 140-year age, the American age is the strongest economic power on the planet, ended, and the crown passed to China. So if that alone is gigantic, and now that we're seeing this, it's gigantic, and that again goes back to all this. You, if you follow me, what did God say in Deuteronomy 28? You know, you'll be the head of nations and your enemies will flee and all this you will lend to many nations, not borrow. If you go against me, then if you turn away from me, you will not be the head of nations anymore and your enemies will be exalted. I will raise up your enemies. It's the exact same thing. Exact. And the implication is you're not going to be lending to many nations. You're going to be borrowing. America went from the greatest creditor nation to the greatest debtor nation in the same time of its apostasy from God. Wow. The Islamic State, on, uh, I think it was Monday, warned in a video that they are going to attack Washington, D.C. and other places. Our own government tells us that ISIS is in all 50 states. They're everywhere. And yet, we say, oh, well, that's not going to happen here. The minute they dis attacked Paris, their first remarks was, the United States basically is next. We love the taste of American blood. Is that right? Yes. Did you hear it? Yes. Many times. But we don't listen. And so all you hear is, oh, I'm going to be raptured out before anything bad happens. Have you ever checked with Jesus? No, no. All I'm saying is, I, I take you to Matthew 24. You can go, you can find it in Luke. You can find it other place. But see what Jesus said. <laughs> he said, we're, there's, there's going to be tribulation. It didn't say seven-year tribulation, but there'll be tribulation such as never was a period of time, like never before, mm -hmm. before Jesus comes back. All I'm saying is, if what I've discovered and by studying the word, if I'm right, this is what God spoke to me. He said, if you don't warn the people when you come out from prison, mm -hmm. he said, Christians or church members will blow their brains out. Mm. Because when their money, God dies, they're going to say, oh, my God, I believed a lie. The Bible's not true. The Bible's true. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you didn't believe that, <laughs> you're not very old. <laughs> because the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. And here you have what many say is the most beautiful city in the world, Paris. Mm -hmm. And for a week after the Eiffel Tower was dark, mm -hmm. Never was it dark before. Mm -mm. The city of lights. You know, n never has p a Europe or, 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 or France had their borders closed <laughs> no. since World War, War II. Two. They mm -hmm. keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. Nothing like this. This is the worst attack since World War II. And yet the prophets have told me over and over, I've been sitting right here with the rabbi sitting, we are in World War III right now. And I'm going to stick my neck out. I personally, I believed it for a long time. I believe we're in World War III. I believe it's a different war than you guys have ever thought we'd have. And when you see this little thing mm -hmm. is about to shake America, yeah. there's going to be such confusion in the Internet mm -hmm. and in your systems, in the banks and all the other things, so many that you don't think there's a war, but there's going to be a cyber war on top of all the other things.
But I believe up to even, I, I hate to use 50, but that's the number the Lord gave me because that's the Jubilee number. There could be that, why have they not done another big attack since 9-11? I believe they're ready. I believe they're in place. They're in all 50 states. And I did not say 50 because there's 50 states. But I felt like God said, though, I, I use the term, there will be, it'll be up to 50 attacks at the same minute, hmm. at the same time. And this is what God showed me. He said, there will be attacks in so many places, mm -hmm. they won't know where to send the troops. Do you know what the president said yesterday? Why we're not fighting? Did you hear what he said? He said, because we don't have enough troops to go around. He says, if something breaks, you saw it. See, I can see it's not in his head. Because if something goes out here, w w what happens if something breaks out over here? Mm -hmm. And honestly, the president knows more than you and I know about all what's going on. Absolutely. They get the intention. And I want to tell you something. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we have tried to be the policemen of the world, and that doesn't seem to work. I've got news for you. Nothing is going to work if God's not put back on the throne Amen. of heaven. That's right. That's right. On America. That's right. That's right. We cannot expect the blessing of God just because you gave money to a church. Right. Oh, I get in trouble so bad. But you know what? I'm getting so old that honestly, I don't have that many more years. So if they're going to come for me, then I'm come. I'm not going to shut up. No, I can't. It's time, you know, I could blame it on the rabbi, but the <laughs> rabbi has warned the world. Right. He has written the book that all America and millions have read. This is one of the best-selling books of Christian books of all times. Sure is. Several million people, and it's a warning. Our time's gone for today, and we hope you'll tune in tomorrow because we're going to have more with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. We're going to continue in the breaking news and what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. But uh, we've got some amazing, amazing thing to talk about. Yes. It's time to hear uh, the word of the Lord. And honestly, there's coming a moment, and it's going to be like that. And it's... It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late to get ready. It's going to be too late to, s to store food. It's going to be too late to do all the things that you wanted to do. And what we've done between now and Christmas, we're doing some special things. And one of the things is that uh, the peace of mind offer. Yeah. Because so oh, many yeah. people have <laughs> listened to mockers and people that are laughing at them. That they haven't stored food. They haven't gotten prepared. It's going to be such a great time for the church. It's going to be a tough time. But it's going to be a great time to win souls. And we have the peace of mind. This one is an honor of, yes. of, of Lori. Because Lori That's said right. the biggest thing her kids have told her was, is Wait, the is peace that, of mind. That we have a peace of mind. Knowing that you and dad cared enough about us to make sure that. We have things together as a family, and there's, we have a peace of mind about going about work and business and life. And this is just a, a brief offer, and and yeah, it can't last the, for long. The, the, the manufacturers are literally, they believe the Bible, so they're they're actually helping us right, right now. Amen. To get people ready, and it's it's the biggest thing we've ever done. Yes, I, it how is. many years is it? It's well, about. It's a it's a total of. 14 years and eight months of food. 
and it's, it's the time of trouble offer, the seven years of food, which is 28 buckets, and it's also